everybody, my name is Kathleen. I am a provisional psychologist and I like to make YouTube videos on what it's like studying psychology, also about different therapy techniques that I'm learning how to use and about storytelling. Last year, I made a video about how to become a psychologist in Australia, but it was mainly centered around how to apply for your masters. And I'm gonna leave a link to that one um, somewhere around this video. So go and check it out if you want afterwards. It's more sort of raw footage of the application process. So in this video, I really wanna hone in and discuss the specific pathways for how to become a psychologist in Australia, assuming that you've done your undergrad majoring in psychology. And stick around to the end of this video because I'm actually gonna give my recommendation for the pathway that I actually think is the best for psychology students in their undergrad of today. So I hope that this is helpful. There's also timestamps down below, so feel free to skip ahead and let's just dive into this video. The first pathway that I'm gonna talk about is the endorsement pathway. In Australia, believe it or not, there are actually nine different areas of specialization that you have to pick from if you want. In order to specialize in one of these areas, is you'll need to do an honours year and realistically you'll need to get a first class honours or an upper second in order to make it into an endorsement master's program. This program will take two years of full-time study during which you will be called a provisional psychologist. So then after you graduate it will take another two years of supervised practice working as a registered psychologist until you'll actually be recognized in your area of specialization as say a clinical psychologist or an organizational psychologist. And in this point in the video, it's worth me pointing out that in Australia, out of all the other fields of specialization, a clinical master's has been quote unquote dubbed as like the best program to get into. The reason for this is because clinical psychologists can offer a higher Medicare rebate compared to registered psychologists or other psychologists that work with clients one-on-one. -on -one. If we look at an example, let's say there's a psychology session that costs $200. A clinical psychologist could offer a rebate of $128.40, meaning that the client would only have to pay $71.60 and the clinical psychologist would still get $200, but the government would pay the difference of $128.40. In comparison, a registered psychologist can only offer a rebate of $87.45. So the client would have to pay $112.55 for that session. This means that a registered psychologist is more likely to operate on a lower fee, whereas clinical psychologists have the flexibility to charge higher amounts as it won't cost the client as much. Now this might come as a bit of a surprise, but I actually don't recommend a master's of clinical psychology to undergraduate psychology students of today. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend applying to honors unless of course you're planning to get into academia, and I'm going to tell you why towards the end of this video. Also, if you're a current student studying psychology and you'd like to have a chat, then feel free to reach out to me. I'd be really happy to do this. I also have a weekly newsletter about what it's like working as a provisional psychologist and other concepts that I learned, so check that out. I'm going to leave a link for it down below. Next up, we're going to be talking about the academic pathway. This is for students who enjoy research and want to go on and do a PhD. After your undergrad, you will need to apply to do an honours year and realistically you will need to get a first class honours in order to be accepted into a PhD program. This will then take you three to four years of full-time study after which you will be able to call yourself a doctor in the field of psychology but you will not be able to call yourself a psychologist. So instead for students who want to work as a psychologist and as a researcher they opt into doing a combined master's endorsement program and a PhD. The Australian Psychological Society says that this will take you about four years to complete. But <laughs> realistically, it's going to take you five to six years of full-time study to complete this pathway. At around the third or fourth year within the program, depending on if you've met the requirements, you'll be able to apply for your general registration as a psychologist. You will then need to do a year and a half of supervised practice before you can receive your endorsement as say like a clinical psychologist, organizational psychologist, whatever area that you specialized in. And then at the end of your PhD, you will be able to say that you're a doctor, for example, in clinical psychology. One of the major advantages of doing a combined endorsement master's program with a PhD is that you will not have to pay for the master's program. And if you've received really good marks for your honors year, you'll be able to apply for a government funded research grant of around 27,000 Australian dollars per annum 
tax-free on the basis that you're not working full-time. So this is part of why getting a first-class honors is so critical. However, it's worth me saying that people do not recommend you going down this pathway if you're looking at it from this purely financial lens. While master's students do have to pay to do their study, it's only two years compared to the four, five, or even six years that you'll have to do if you were doing a PhD combined with a master's. And honestly, that is a really hard stretch. So you should only pick that pathway if you have an interest in research. The final pathway that I am going to talk about is the generalist pathway. And you no longer have to do an honors year if you want to go down this route. Some universities now offer a two year program called a Masters of Professional Psychology, which you can do straight after your undergrad. This option has only been introduced in the last couple of years, and it has completely changed the landscape of a career path for psychologists. During your two-year master's program, you will become a provisional psychologist, and then afterwards you will need to work for one year as a provisional psychologist before you can apply for general registration. And for psychology students that have already done an honours year, there is an option to do a one-year master's program and then work one year as a provisional psychologist and then apply for your general registration. But for psychology students of today, I strongly recommend applying for a master's of professional psychology straight after your undergrad. And slowly, I predict that we will start to see this becoming the more mainstream pathway. One reason for this, if we compare it to the endorsement pathway, let's say a clinical master's in psychology, this would take you six years of studying full-time before you could work in the industry as a psychologist, which would limit your earning power early on. Plus, any two-year master's program that you pick will cost you around 60 to 75,000 Australian dollars. In comparison, a generalist pathway in psychology only takes five years studying full-time. It's a lot less stressful and there's a lot less risk. You don't have to apply to honours and then you don't have to apply to a separate master's program. If we also have a look at the numbers, let's take the Australian National University. They offer 30 places for their Masters of Professional Psychology and they only offer 12 to 16 spots for their Masters in Clinical Psychology. So you can see that an endorsement program is a lot Lot more competitive. But to reiterate, I'm not trying to say that a master's in clinical psychology or a PhD is a bad choice. If you're very passionate about academia or if you're certain that you want to become a clinical psychologist or you want to be endorsed in another area, then you should absolutely go for this pathway. But if you're not too sure what area of psychology you want to work in and you're worried about the cost and the pressure, then I would strongly recommend looking at doing the generalist pathway and making your goal to become a registered psychologist. And one of the reasons why I think this pathway is going to become more mainstream is because we're starting to see what's called a bridging program pop up at different universities. A bridging course is a one-year master's that you can do to become an endorsed psychologist in a particular area like clinical psychology after you've spent a bit of time working in that field as a registered psychologist. So hypothetically, you do your three-year undergrad, then you do a two-year master's program, then you spend some time working in the field, working out what you like, what you don't like, and then if you want, you do a one-year bridging course in the area of endorsement that you'd like to become recognized in a particular area of psychology. So in sum, the reasons why I think this is the best pathway at the moment is because it's cheaper and and it's much less competitive, so it's much less stressful. However, remember that this is just my take on it. At the end of the day, you should still do your own research and you should pick the path that seems best for you. What helped me work out my own journey was doing a lot of research into it. My mom is also a clinical psychologist and I have a lot of friends who have done clinical masters, PhDs, or even combined. Hearing their feedback and their advice is also what helped me to create this video. And ultimately, this is the video that I wish I had when I was in my undergrad. And to remember that at the end of the day, if you can work out your why for picking a particular path, it's going to make the journey easier and more enjoyable. So yeah, that's everything from me in this video. Remember that if you at any point want to have a chat and talk to someone, feel free to reach out. I'm really happy to talk to students and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day or an amazing week and I will talk to you guys in another one of my videos. All right, take care. Bye.